Hi, it's Mike Cashman. I caught up with Terry Reinke, MEP, at the European Parliament Building in London on 30th of June. So, Terry Reinke, Hi. thank you for doing this interview for 16 Million Rising radio show. My pleasure. And hopefully the National Rejoin March and Britannic Way to the Rules YouTube channel. Um, now, Terry, three years ago I switched on the TV uh, for the European Parliament and there was somebody speaking there who I'd never seen before, a German MEP speaking very clearly and definitely and truthfully about the situation with a deep love for the UK. Wow. Can you tell us what brought you to that point? <laughs> oh my God, uh, how much time do we have? Because there would be a lot to say. Um, no, but I think uh, you already mentioned the most important part um, that uh, I have a lot of love and affection uh, and passion for the UK. Uh, I have lived here, I've studied here, uh, I have a lot of friends from the UK. Uh, and obviously um, the Brexit decision was really heartbreaking for me. Um, I think a feeling that was also shared by colleagues in the European Parliament, by a lot of citizens in the United Kingdom. Um, and I think uh, already before that, but then definitely starting with that, um, I tried to uh, be more engaged in the topic of what happened, why was there this decision leading to Brexit, um, what were maybe also some of the misconceptions uh, around the European Union um, that were part of this referendum campaign. Um, and I wanted to get more engaged in talking and communicating, obviously, about the negotiations that were going on, but also to and with um, citizens in the UK. Because I had the feeling that one of the mistakes that maybe also we from the side of the European Union had made in the referendum campaign was that we were very sort of reserved to actually get engaged. Um, and I tried to, to change that. And ever since then, I have been very engaged and very inspired, I must say, by the pro-European citizens. Oh, and you, you have been so inspiring. But you started the UK-EU Friendship Group. Exactly. Uh, tell us about that. So after the general election uh, where Boris Johnson got a big majority um, was, uh, was over and we knew that Brexit was indeed going to happen, there would not be a final say about um, the, the agreement, um, I thought, okay, we need to do something and we need to do it now. Um, and I thought I gather uh, MEPs from all different democratic political groups to work together and to try to create entry points for civil society organizations, for citizens, but also obviously for politicians from the UK who wanted to work together um, towards still having close ties also after Brexit. And I think we were really successful. Um, we did a lot of work, we did a number of events, obviously because of Corona, maybe not as much in person as we would have liked to, but um, uh, a lot of um, discussions happened. And now we are moving the work towards the EU-UK delegation, um, where obviously MEPs uh, and MPs from the UK are working together. And I hope also there we can actually get an involvement from civil society and also citizens. Mm. Now, I talk to a lot of pro-Brexit people on the Britannia Waves the Rules YouTube channel, and they tell me there are five reasons that make it absolutely impossible for the UK to rejoin the EU. Uh, the British people wouldn't do it, the British, the British politicians wouldn't do it, the EU wouldn't agree it, uh, the trade deals that the UK will have, and we wouldn't get the same deal as we had before. Now, British people already, a big majority, think that Brexit's a mistake, which isn't the same as rejoining, but we're getting there. British politicians, I wouldn't be asking you to take back a government, including Boris Johnson, right? We're talking about Keir Starmer, if he's got his uh, priorities right, or a different leader, Stella Creasy or somebody, we're talking about British politicians who are positive about it. But what about the EU? Is it true that the EU wouldn't have the UK back? I think that that's absolutely not true. And I really don't know where this impression is coming from because um, when I travel across the European Union, I think there is still a lot of positive feeling towards the citizens in the UK, not necessarily always towards the UK government because you know the negotiations have been really difficult in the past month and actually now already years. Um, but I think there would be a lot of readiness from the EU side, both from the Commission, the governments and the rest of the EU member states, but also really from the citizens um, to have the, the UK rejoin the European Union. And, and as you say, people don't recognise that. So what can be done to make people more aware of that? Because that could make a big difference. I think what I'm trying to do also with this visit here in the UK now is to get conversations going again because I have the feeling with our UK colleagues gone and you know also much less engagement with British civil society citizens groups um, due to Corona but also now because obviously a lot of the institutionalized links are not so much there anymore 
um, that there is um, less of a conversation going. So I would like to uh, well, revive that a little bit and also really encourage groups and you know not only political groups but also any kind of association choirs fire brigades yeah. you know really where people come together to try to build bridges between the EU and the and the UK obviously with partner cities uh, you know with maybe people who work on similar issues because i think that that is going to be key for you know moving closer together uh, and eventually then hopefully from my point of view for the UK to rejoin the European Union. Okay, now I mentioned and one example of that, and I mentioned this to you earlier today, the National Rejoin March on Saturday, 10th of September. Are you interested in coming on that? Definitely. Yeah, would you like to speak? Yes, I would definitely love to come, um, but unfortunately I couldn't check my, my schedule yet, but okay. uh, I will check and then I will see if I can come to London. Well, we'd love to see you in person, and if not, at least um, a video message, hopefully. Yeah, that I can do for sure. Okay. Now, uh, I'd like you to be a bit imaginative, Terry, on this one, because you have to think into a different mindset. If the UK was to rejoin the EU, what do you think would be the biggest benefit of Brexit that the Brexiters would miss most if we were to rejoin? <laughs> I don't know, the blue, the blue passports. Um, it could be that, yeah. No, I, uh, I think that um, at the end of the day, what Brexit has ironically brought, and I think that this is really something that a lot of people didn't expect, because, you know, Nigel Farage was speaking in the European Parliament, saying that we are only going to be the first country, and once we have left and people see how great it's going, <laughs> then the rest will also effect. realize yes. exactly. And I think the exact opposite has happened. We have Eurobarometer surveys that show that the support of the European Union in, in across the member states hasn't been this high in years. So... Um, I think that ironically what Brexit really did is bring the European Union closer together and I hope that at some point also again with the UK. Okay, so getting to the end, what, uh, what do you think else we should be doing in the UK? Well, I would say keep going. Um, I think that it's very important that there are still so many groups, there are so many people, so many initiatives that are still engaged uh, in this. Um, keep the links going um, because I think if people exchange and get to know each other that's really going to be the sort of um, you know the energy that we will need um, to to keep this movement going but also to to keep the ties close and then you know to see how how we can work on getting back together okay and are you hopeful and do you have a message for the listeners to 16 million rising whether it's 16 million listeners or not they could all listen <laughs> Do you have a message for them? Are you hopeful? Well, I can only say again that what the pro-European citizens groups have been doing in the UK in the past years has been so inspiring that they kept going, that they didn't give up. And I think they have really shown that, you know, there are so many people who really believe in the European project and that has had a lot of effects in the UK, but also across Europe. And I think that's what is really much needed right now, um, obviously for the European Union, um, but also... I think uh, in terms of defending the values that the EU stands for, democracy, rule of law, um, fundamental rights. Um, and I hope that um, with this, we can work together. We can keep this movement going, obviously also have European movements from across the EU. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope that I will come back many times to the UK and meet a lot of more people. We hope you will too. Terry Reinke, as always, speaking clearly and definitely and hopefully and positively. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. All right. Well, I would say keep going. Um, I think that it's very important that there are still so many groups, there are so many people, so many initiatives that are still engaged uh, in this. And um, keep the links going, um, because I think if people exchange and get to know each other, that's really going to be the sort of, um, you know, the energy that we will need um, to, to keep this movement going, but also to, to keep the ties close and then, you know, to see how, how we can work on getting back together. Okay. And are you hopeful and do you have a message for the listeners to 16 million rising? Whether it's 16 million listeners or not, they could all listen. <laughs> do you have a message for them? Are you hopeful? Well, I can only say again that what the pro-European citizens groups have been doing in the UK in the past years has been so inspiring that they kept going, that they didn't give up. And I think they have really shown that, you know, there are so many people who really believe in the European project and that has had a lot of effects in the UK, but also across Europe. And I think that's what is really much needed right now, um, obviously for the European Union, um, but also... I think uh, in terms of defending the values that the EU stands for, democracy, rule of law, 
um, fundamental rights um, and I hope that um, with this we can work together, we can keep this movement going, obviously also have European movements from across the EU um, and uh, yeah, I hope that I will come back many times to the UK and meet a lot of more people. We hope you will too. Terry Reinke, as always, speaking clearly and definitely and hopefully and positively. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. All right.